Welcome back. So the last time we had our first look at the Snapships Tactics AI cards, and the example we're using here is the uh, Locust Close Support Fire. That's what we'll be using for our next uh, uh, battle. I might change my mind on that. I might use the one that doesn't have missiles because I don't know if my Wakazashi Stealth Fighter custom build is going to be able to do much against missiles. But um, uh, we're moving on now to the next page, which is page 30 in the rule book. AI ship movement exceptions, okay? So we're going to start with AI ship collisions. When an AI ship is involved in a collision with another ship, it is always positioned on the opposite side of the other ship's base in a straight line along the direction it was currently traveling. If the AI ship cannot be placed there because it would fly off a board, edge, or overlap another ship base, place it as close as possible to the intended location. If an AI ship collides with an opposing ship, uh, roll the damage as usual. AI ships do not roll for damage when colliding with other AI ships on their team. Hmm, that's interesting. So you can pass through your own ships. Does that apply for your teammates as well? I, that, might, that might be covered in uh, solo and cooperative play. I don't see anything very... No, multiplayer ships... Uh, it's a question for another time. AI ships do not roll for damage when colliding with other AI ships on their team. Okay. Okay, AI ships leave in the play area. AI ships avoid leaving the play area if it's reasonable for them to do so. When an AI ship performs a movement or rotation that will cause it to leave the play area, first check to see if that action can be performed in a way that does not leave the play area. If it can, the AI resolves the action that way. For example, the AI is adjacent to an edge and performs a turnaway icon as part of its chassis move. This rotation should be limited to an angle that keeps the AI parallel to the edge. Next bullet point says the AI has a move icon with three possible directions. The direction it is instructed to perform will cause it to overlap the edge of the play area, so it must choose one of the other options if doing so will not overlap the edge of the play area. If the only option for resolving an action still causes the AI ship to overlap the edge of the play area, it follows the same steps as a player-controlled ship. It stops at the edge, reduces evasion by one, and rotates two increments, 90 degrees, if doing so will align its forward facing more toward its target. Okay? Next column, AI ship heat and damage. AI ships dealing critical hits and disabling parts. When an AI ship attacks a player ship and inflicts a critical hit, roll for the location as usual. If the AI would choose the location, it selects a part to disable based on the following criteria. One, the part with the most heat cubes, because that does more damage. And that's, I cannot remember if we've been remembering to apply that additional damage in those situations. Two, if tied, the part with the, fewer, with the fewest power cubes. Okay? That's to prevent recycling power cubes. That, that makes sense. Three, if tied, any part that cannot be repaired. Like uh, the, uh, there's a couple of those. The, uh, the bulkheads cannot be repaired, for, for example. Four, if still tied, the defender chooses between the tied parts. Okay? AI ships suffering critical hits. Since AI ships do not use part cards, their AI decks include a critical hit table to determine the effects of critical hits. For each critical hit, roll, this is important, roll for the location and check the table on the back of the AI's deck to determine the effects of the roll. B means blank. Okay, so the negative one in blue is a negative one action icon. Place a special damage token beside the AI ship with the negative one action side face up. Okay, the critical damage token, and I have these in the starter box here. Place a special damage token beside the AI ship with the critical damage side face up. Okay? The uh, burst hit damage icons. The AI ship suffers this much additional damage. This is an ab abstraction of the heat it would have on board for performing its actions during its last activation. Okay. So, now we know what some of this means. So, if... My Wakazashi scores a critical hit on what we're calling the Hornet, uh, and we roll a blank through a six, uh, the Hornet suffers a negative one um, 
attack action or a negative one action. Okay, and it, we'll find out what that means here in a moment. It rolls a seven, a negative one action plus one additional damage in supplement to the damage of the attack. If it rolls an eight, negative one attack, a negative one action plus two additional damage, simulating two heat on a part or something. And if you roll a critical, you get the critical hit token plus two additional damage. Okay? All right. Now we now understand what that means. That was one thing I was confused about. So all you got to do is read and comprehend and sometimes say it out loud. Uh, okay, we can skip that. Special damage token effects. Each negative one action token reduces the number of actions the AI ship performs in the next time it activates. If an AI ship gains one during its activation, for example, due to a collision, apply its effect immediately. At the end of the AI ship's activation, at the end of the AI ship's activation, remove all these tokens. Now, the activation is chassis and parts. I think. Yes. Because part four is end of activation effect. So uh, if you if if a critical hit causes you to lose one action, so for in the instance of these this particular card, it has three actions normally, you'd only be able to perform two actions that round. And then once you got to your end of action phase, you'd remove the negative icon. It's possible to not be able to perform any actions other than your chassis action if you have too many of those negative one uh, uh, tokens next to your AI card. Now, each critical damage token allows players to selectively prevent AI actions. Whenever the AI would resolve a part action, players may remove one of these tokens to prevent the AI from performing that action. This row is still considered to be resolved and must be skipped on further actions for this activation. An AI ship chassis action row cannot be prevented. Okay. Critical damage tokens remain assigned to an AI ship until players choose to remove them or until the AI ship has actions remaining and no further part actions to perform. We talked about that. So if it goes down all its different actions and it doesn't qualify for any more, but you still have part actions available, uh, you could remove a critical damage token with one action. I think it's one for one, uh, but we need to go back and check that and make absolutely certain. Um, if the ship has any heat cubes on its chassis or chassis, spend actions to remove them one heat cube. Well, we haven't gotten to that yet. If an AI ship has no, if the ship has any critical damage tokens, spend one action to remove them. One critical damage. That answered the question. So it is one per one. Okay. Okay, now here we go. AI ships gaining heat. Whenever an AI ship gains heat through any means, those heat cubes are placed with its AI deck. And there are some parts cards. I don't think I have any that would add heat to the uh, ship. Um, if the AI ship suffers any critical hits before its next activation... Uh, remove all those heat cubes and deal it one additional damage for each heat cube. When the ship is next activated, whew, this is complicated, uh, remove any heat cubes next to the AI deck and place them back into the supply. That's covered in... Uh, something. Uh, uh, this must be it. Perform chassis action. Okay. Part C of perform chassis action. Remove all heat cubes. That's when that would happen. Um, for every two heat removed, assign the AI ship a negative one action token. Removing a single heat cube has no effect. Okay, so only if it's two heat cubes, that's when uh, you would do so. One fewer action, or one less action that round. AI ships dealing heat. When an AI ship attacks a player ship with a weapon that places heat, such as with the Wasp's D88 uh, or DB8 proton cannon, place the heat on the part that, one, does not currently have any heat cubes. If no such part exists, this effect is ignored and does not add any further heat. Two, has the most power cubes currently on it. Or three, if there are still multiple options, 
the affected player chooses between the tied parts. Does not currently have any heat cubes, parenthesis, if no such part exists, this effect is ignored. So if you don't have any heat on you, I agree with the train. This doesn't make any sense. Never fails when I'm filming a video. That damn train. Okay, um, does not currently have any heat cubes. Parenthesis, if no such part exists. If, 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 if there's no heat on the ship, this effect is ignored and does not add any further heat. Okay, that's confusing. Okay, and that's it. That's, that's it. But unfortunately, the ship's, AI ship's dealing heat. Let's see if any of my, well, yeah. My, uh, there's some missiles on this. You know what? I'm going to look at this other one and see if there's no missiles. Okay. We've been looking at the, uh, Locust close support fighter this whole time. I'm going to switch to the Locust stealth uh, craft, which will be on par with my Wakazashi stealth fighter, I suppose, maybe. Uh, because... Uh, I think adding missiles to the mix on this first playthrough is going to be a little too much for me to handle. My brain's going to explode. We'll try it on the second night. So, uh, using all the information we've got from parts one and two now. So this is the front of the car. This is the front of the Locust Stealth Craft. This is one. So, for the activation phase, uh, well, suppose... Okay, you know, you got to look at both sides here. So it's hull nine, uh, no power cubes on a AI car. Uh, passive ability during a collision, the other ship suffers one additional damage. Also a chassis ability, you cannot be targeted at range three or further, which kind of sucks for this, uh, this particular loadout, which means I can only attack from range one to two with my scar pulse laser, so we'll just have to deal with that. Um, okay. So if this locust suffers a critical hit from an attack, if you roll B through six, it gets one a negative one part action. Roll seven through eight, a negative one part action and one damage, one additional damage. A critical hit, you get a critical hit token and two additional damage, but I need to look up the critical hit token again. Each critical hit token allows players to selectively prevent... Okay, so in um, a subsequent round, if the Locust has a critical hit token on it, I can prevent it from using one of his actions. It still counts as the action if it tries to use it, but I can negate it. Okay? Okay, so that's all the information here. So, uh, when it's the this ship's turn, it uh, changes its evasion to three. Um, if my ship... Is within range one to two. Uh, if it's within range one to two, you would turn towards the ship and make a long maneuver. I think that's what that means. If I'm within range one to two, I want to make absolutely certain I understand this at least at some level. Yeah. So if you're within range 1 to 2, you turn to 45 degrees toward the player and do a long maneuver. Otherwise, you turn 45 degrees toward the player, do the long maneuver, then turn up to 90 degrees toward the player. Okay? And then that would be the chassis action. And then we move on to the part actions. You get three on this uh, Locust. Um, okay. If you have missiles locked onto you, uh, you can perform... The anti, or you should perform the anti-missile action only if the total number of damage from the missiles is seven or higher. That's what that little seven is. is. Otherwise, uh, when you perform the anti-missile check, you have to roll a seven or higher to shoot any of them down. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm interpreting that. But if there are no missiles uh, you and you're within range one to three in a line of sight, the railgun uh, of your target. You roll three dice. The hit number is two plus the target's evasion. Each hit does two damage. Okay. Um, uh, if you're not within range of this attack, uh, but you would move on to the next row. 
uh, in this case, if the target is behind you in your 180 degree arc, you would do uh, a long maneuver, whichever one makes the most sense, uh, either forward or oblique to the left or right, and then do a U-turn. It says move into terrain if able, or move away from target, whichever applies, okay? And that would be one part action. Uh, then you would go back up here again and see if this applies. And if it still doesn't, you'd skip this one because you just did it. You move on to the next one. Um, there's no criteria. You would move the ship sideways to the left or right and gain one evasion. If able, avoid collision, move into terrain away from the target. Okay? And if that didn't apply, you'd move down to this. If the uh, ship is within, oh, what is that? 180? Oh, gosh. If you're essentially, if you're behind, I mean, it's it's more than behind. You, I don't know what the actual degree is there. Uh, I can see it. Anything outside of that 90 degree arc, um, turn up to 45 degrees towards your opponent. And say that one applied this round. Then we go back up here. Actually, this one would always apply, wouldn't it? So we did one, two, and then maybe that would be the third criteria, and you have three parts. If this one didn't apply for some reason, you move on to this and then boost your evasion one more for the AI ship. And that would be three parts actions, and at that point, the ship's turn is over. Okay, we understand that. Now, I'm going to look at all these to see if these apply heat. And I'm going to look at all my parts to see if they apply heat. Because um, we've got different results on this one. The chassis uh, movement is different. If you're in range one or two, move away from your opponent up to 45 degrees. Go long. And then move towards your opponent. You're just trying to get some... You're trying to build some distance, I guess. Uh, otherwise, do this. And I'm not going to read this out each time. Um, and then the part actions... Uh, well, this is a little different. If there's a missile lock, if you've got missiles on you, uh, you can do a, any missile check. You have to roll a five or higher. Okay, so that's one part action. You can't do that and fire a weapon in the same turn, I'm assuming, because you can't, because that's always, unless you have two primary weapons on the ship, but this is an AI card. So let's assume that happened. We can't attack this turn. Second one, if you're within range one, two, or three of your opponent, rotate up to 90 degrees to face your opponent. That would be the second part action. But if that didn't apply, you'd have to go down to this one and sidestep to the left or right, add one evasion, move into terrain if able, or move away from target. Okay? And if you did that one instead, then you go back up top. Now, well, maybe we can do an attack. No, we've already used this. We've already used this. Uh, I'm interpreting it that way. I'm, I'm going to have to ask the uh, Facebook group on this one. But assuming we can't do this one again, then we would have to move to this one. Uh... And, but if we can't do any more, then uh, the turn's over. Uh, but in this case, we, if you're within range 1, 2, or 3, turn 90 degrees to face your opponent, and then the turn's over. Okay? Um, very quickly. I halfway understand this now. Well, probably more than halfway. If your opponent is within range 1 or 2, turn 1 away from it, move long, turn 2 toward it. Otherwise, uh, if you're outside of range 1 or 2, Turn toward it, move long, turn one, and then turn one toward the opponent, move long, then turn two toward the opponent. Part actions, okay. Ooh, nine or higher for a missile, any missile check. Wait a minute. That means you can only destroy missiles. No, I'm, I'm interpreting this wrong, aren't I? No, 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 because the anti-missile action on this Uh, I'm going to have to go back and run it. Any missile doesn't have a, a value. But let's look at the rules again. Okay. Uh, if there are missile tokens assigned to the AI ship, count the total damage they will inflict if they all hit. If that total is equal to or greater than the number shown, use this part to perform an anti-missile roll and shoot them down. Which in this case, so only if a missile would do nine or if the missiles would do nine or more damage if they all hit, would you roll an anti missile check? And if that's the case, you're probably screwed anyway. But I'm still interpreting this that you would have to roll a nine or higher to shoot them down, which means you would have to roll a, a, 
a critical hit. Uh, no, no, no. I am misinterpreting that. I now understand what to do. The anti-missile check is contingent upon the number on the missile token. Okay. You, this would only come into play if the total number of damage would be nine or higher. I get it. I totally get it. Okay. So, first part action. If you're within range three and you're line of sight with this rail gun, uh, you would perform the action. React. When attacking, if any of your dice miss, re-roll one of them. I bet this is going to be hard to beat even with AI on it. Uh, if that doesn't apply, move to the next. If you're within range three, uh, rotate your ship or the AI ship up to 90 degrees to face the target. Uh, and then go on to the next action. This one makes more sense. Or sidestep, boost evasion to one, move into terrain if able, or move away from the target. So I'm beginning to see a pattern with some of these. So you're, you're sort of locked into the railgun with this build. Okay. So if you're using the AI cards, you're very, very, very limited in the builds you can use. You have to use the stock builds on these. Okay. So there's two choices for a movement depending on the criteria. And you've got four different parts of action. So if you're on this one, this bottom one here, if your target is in front of you in the 180 degree firing arc anywhere, rotate towards it up to 90 degrees to face it. And then... Okay, so we've got a U-turn. We've got this one again. But you have to be within range one to do that sidestep. Try to avoid hitting it. Okay. Okay, well... Yeah, it's it's still going to... I'm still going to blunder through this and make mistakes. But I'm now equipped with the information and knowledge I need to uh, use the AI cards. I'll have to dig out all the uh, negative one blue tokens for the uh, critical, uh, critical hits charts. And the... Uh, the X's, the red X's, the, uh, uh, what are they called? The critical damage tokens? Yeah, critical damage icons, little tokens, don't they? Uh, the negative one, the blue negative one token means you get one fewer uh, parts action during your turn. And uh, you can remove, and that gets removed. Wait a minute, why would you ever take that off with your extra move? At the end of the AI's ship activation, remove all these tokens. So it only applies for that turn. Okay, critical damage tokens remain assigned to the AI ship until players choose to remove them. Players, the human player, choose to remove them. Or until the AI ship has actions remaining and no further part actions to perform. Okay, and remember, we don't use a part action if it doesn't make sense to do so, if it's not tactically sound. All right. That would allow us, that would give us the leeway to uh, use the part action to remove the critical hit icon. And let me check to see if any of my parts here in this first match are going to put any heat. Um, now remember, because of the parts I have loaded on this custom ship, uh, the AI will not get a rear or flank bonus on me, but I will get a flank and rear bonus on the ship. Uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing weird. Uh, so a lot of these rules will not come into play on this first match, and that's probably just as well. That will allow me to ease into this. Uh, I've already had a recommendation to switch out the shotgun from the uh, pul SCAR Pulse Laser on my ship. Uh, that shotgun works remarkably similar to the rail gun, so I may end up doing that. I'm not, in, I'm not in love with any of these parts cards on my ship, except for uh, the Falx Cockpit and the Falx Booster. Because... Uh, uh, I, I'm, I enjoyed both those. Uh, so, I think we're at this point, unless I have to wait till another day, and I don't know what day that is. I think with the knowledge, and I might have to read this all again before we play the match, but we're ready to, to pit the Wakazashi against the Hornet here using uh, custom loadout and uh, this Locust uh, Stealth Fighter AI set. Okay, well, if you're confused, I wouldn't sweat it. Um... Uh, my my videos are not the ones to be watching to learn to play this. This was literally me learning to play the the uh, the, uh, the built-in AI, and it genuinely helps me to to talk to talk it out, to say it out loud. And I, maybe this will benefit someone. Maybe it won't. The only thing I was really confused on, all all said and done, was this icon right here. I was misinterpreting it. 
uh, if the total damage of the missiles locked onto you is seven or higher, if they would all hit, uh, you would do an anti-missile check. Otherwise, you do the attack, if you're within range three on this card, of your opponent. Okay, I understand it. At this point, it doesn't matter if viewers that aren't playing this game understand it. As long as I understand it, we can play out the matches. Okay? Thanks so much for watching, pals, and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.